All right. Welcome back for the last part of One Man's Faith today. We are, we're looking at Galatians 3, and we're looking at 15 uh, to the end, and I'm not sure we're going to make it. But point number one I was trying to make was this. All of us have a vision that God has given us. Point number two is we need to seek and find out what that vision is if you don't already know. You may be walking in and don't realize it. You may think, well, you know, I love doing this, but I, I don't, I feel funny because it's not Christian. You know, it's, you know, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not being a missionary. Well, you don't, you don't have to be a missionary to be a missionary. No, missionary means you just go out. Well, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're going out. You know, it doesn't hurt too uh, to go on short-term missions. Take a week, but no, but find out: Are you happy doing what you're doing? That's one one indication. Okay, now, uh, just get involved and allow Jesus and the Holy Spirit to be involved. Okay, Galatians three nineteen. Through 25 says, Why then was the law added? Because of transgression until the descendant came to whom the promise pertained. It was put into effect through angels by means of a mediator. Let me stop right there. It says, Angels uh, by means of a mediator. The term angel can also mean messenger. And so I believe this passage really should be it was put into effect through messengers by means of a mediator, i.e., in other words, what he gave us through the law and the prophets. Okay? Verse 20, Now a mediator involves more than one party, but God is one. So is the law in conflict with the promises of God? Of course not. For if the law had been given that could give us life, then certainly righteousness would have come through the law. I.e., righteousness doesn't come through the law, it comes by faith. But the Scripture has captured everything by means of sin's net so that what was promised by the fullness of the Messiah or the faithfulness of the Messiah might be granted to those who believe. Now before faith came about, we were held in custody and confined under the law in preparation for the faith that was to be revealed. And so the law was our guardian until the Messiah came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come about, we are no longer under a guardian. We, you and I, as Goyim, Gentiles, were not meant to come under the law, to be under law. As a matter of fact, our Jewish brothers and sisters were not meant to stay under the law. All right? It was meant that we all come out from under law and come into grace. And messianic Jewishness is, has appeared in which, in which those that are Jewish believe in the Messiah and they are starting to walk in grace and coming out from under the law. Now, yes, you'll see them uh, uh, f uh, uh, fulfill the feasts well, in a sense, we all should be doing that because we're going to be doing it in the millennial time. As a matter of fact, we, we right now are in the midst of uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. It started Sunday night. It'll go through Sunday night. All right? It pertains to the millennial, the millennial time, the thousand-year reign. It is, it is the most joyous, and as a matter of fact, in a sense, it's commanded for them to give thanks and be joyous. The other ones are more solemn. The other, the other six feasts are more solemn. But these are uh, uh, feasts given by God. Yes, to His people, but that includes us. And Zechariah says that those people that do not come to Jerusalem and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles during the millennial period will not receive rain that year. So we're all going to, we are all eventually going to have to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. All right? So 
the law was given to show right and wrong. There really wasn't much going on before the law was given. Yes, people had started to develop things because they saw that murdering one another wasn't really a good thing. Uh, matter of fact, the... Uh, was it the Habaraki? There was a uh, there was a Mid Eastern that uh, that actually started to set up a code of law. But God came and said, "Okay, you are my people. Here is your law." And He gave him the Ten Commandments, and then went on to give him the other. I think it's about six hundred and twelve commands that are shown in Deuteronomy and uh, Exodus and Numbers. Um, and so the law was to show that and to show what the punishment would be. In other words, if I kill somebody, my punishment will be this. If I steal from somebody, my punishment will be that. Okay? So that was really the purpose of the law. But it was given to the Jewish people, not to the world. So the Jewish people were under that because it was different than the other, the other nations had laws like sacrifice your child. You know the you know Molech, uh, and 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 some and some of these other gods who required uh, not just animal sacrifice but human sacrifice, nor especially babies and young children. You see that was against God. That's why abortion is so wrong, because ab abortion killing a young child is an abomination to God. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. It's not right. It's not the way we're built. And contrary to Lady Gaga, you were not born that way. I'm sorry. You're trying to fulfill your own desires instead of the desires God has for you. He did not build us to, for same-sex stuff. That doesn't produce children. And that's one, of the, that's one of the things that's part of the blessing given to us. Be fruitful and multiply. So that's why the law was given, all right? Now, the cognizant point here is this. The promise was never nullified. The promise was never nullified. Now, if you look at Abraham's life, you'd almost have to start at chapter 12 of Genesis and go through, uh, I think, at least 20, maybe 22, to see. But over and over, God kept saying to Abraham, you're going to have descendants. He said, hey, go look at the stars. If you can count them, that's how many descendants you're going to have. He said, he went to the sea store. He said, hey, if you can count the number of grains of sand, that's how many, that's how many descendants you're going to have. And so um, God gave those promises. But at one point, they go into Egypt because of a famine, I believe. And Abraham says to Sarah, tell him you're my sister. Another, a lie. He came out of that, but God did not nullify the promise to him. All right? God came and made covenant with Abraham and after that Sarah says well I can't have kids go into my servant Hagar now why she picked Hagar I don't know it's possible Hagar Hagar was Egyptian it's possible she was the one of the king's daughters the, the Pharaoh and um, maybe uh she thought that, uh, you know, it would be kind of a royalty thing if Hagar had a, had a child. Abraham does it, obeys his wife. <laughs> I, I won't go into that. Okay, obeys his wife, and they have a kid, Ishmael. God did not invalidate his promise to Abraham, even though Abraham tried to help God. The promise was never nullified. And God eventually, uh, he had Ishmael when he was 86. He has uh, 
Isaac when he's 100. Okay, so 96, 14 years later. But God does not nullify his promise. He has given us the promises. And you can look, you can look at that all the way through uh, Genesis 12 to uh, Genesis, let's see, when did he have, uh, oops, I don't, I don't have it. Uh, I think it's, I think it's Genesis, uh, Genesis 17. Yeah, Genesis 17. Okay, so 12 through 17. You can read about the different promises and how Abraham did things. They were human and God did not nullify the promise. Okay, fourth thing is this, walk in your destiny. Find out what it is. God has something for you. It is excellent. It is to bring, is to bring honor into your life. It is, it is to fulfill you because you were built for that destiny. Don't let it run away from you. If you know what it is and you haven't been going toward it, then repent. Just say, Father, forgive me because I haven't become the man or woman of God you want me to be. Lord, I'm turning around right now. Show me, Lord. Help me to get on the right path. Seek Him. Seek Him. Through the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, He will take you through step by step what is, a, what is needed to accomplish the destiny that he has for you. Only you can do what he's called you to do. And there are people that only you can touch through your life. Just follow the Lord. Open your mind to hear what he says. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing or you don't think you have an idea, then say, Father, show me. Show me what it is. You look at your what plucks your heart. What makes you tick? What is your main desire in life? Go towards it. And God will bless you. Amen. Have a great week. Seek the Lord and let him lead you. Okay? God bless you. I'll see you next time.